Welcome to the Whole Food Plant-Based Cooking Show, where we make plant-based cooking easy. I'm Jill, and today we're making a potato and leek quiche that's good for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Grab a plate, cause it's the all-free Whole Food Plant-Based Cooking Show. Today's show is brought to you in part by Compliment. As healthy as it is, did you know there are a handful of missing or hard-to-get nutrients from a plant-based diet? The latest research suggests that complementing your diet with a few specific vitamins, minerals, and omega-3s will help boost your energy and keep you thriving for the long term. That's why I take Complement Plus every day. Complement Plus contains the eight critical nutrients in dosages optimized specifically for plant-based eaters. Plus, they're completely transparent about ingredient sourcing and third-party testing, publishing the results directly on their website. As a special discount for our viewers, just use the code WFPB15 at checkout to save 15% off of your order. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Today we are making a potato and leek quiche because it's comforting, it's still cold outside, and this just fills your house and your stomach with delicious, nutritious comfort food. So we are gonna jump right in. I already have my oven preheated to 375, and if you want a printable version of the recipe, it'll be in a, a link in the details below. Uh, we are gonna start on the crust first. So you need a nine inch uh, pie plate, you could do it in a like a brownie pan too, but I like to do it in the in the round dish. It's just a little bit prettier. Okay, so what I have here, I have one and a half cups of ground rolled oats or oat flour. I always like to just get my own rolled oats and grind them just into kind of a, a loose grind, not really fine. We have half a cup of almond flour, two tablespoons of flax meal. We're gonna mix that together, stir that together first. And then you're gonna need a couple pieces of parchment paper because we're gonna roll this out just like a pie crust, really. You could also, you could really just press this, once it's mixed together, you could press it into the bottom of your pan with your hands, uh, but it's much easier if you just, and more consistent uh, thickness if you do it uh, if you roll it out first. Okay, so now I have two tablespoons of tahini. One tablespoon of white wine vinegar. And that just gives it a little bit of a punch because this is a really rich crust. So you need a little bit of something to cut the richness. And then a quarter of a cup of water. And that doesn't sound like much liquid, right? And you might have to add just, you know, maybe another tablespoon of water. You'll just kind of have to gauge that yourself. But you're gonna mix this until it all sticks together into a ball. And it is kind of a dry mixture. So you gotta just mix it well first, kind of cut into it, or if you have a, like a little pastry cutter, that works really well. Yeah, we might have to add a tablespoon of water or so just to get it to all clump together. Okay. See how it is? You know, with a pastry crust, they're usually, you know, it looks like these big clumps. And you just keep working it, and eventually it all comes together. Because you don't want it to be too, um, too liquidy or too soft, because then you'll never get it out of that pie pan. Okay, I need a little bit more water. So I'm just gonna try one tablespoon first. And this is, you know, just all depending on your ingredients. Everybody's gonna have a little bit different ingredients. So you'll have to just adjust your water as you go. And you just gotta kind of feel it. So almost there, just a little bit more. Just like with any pie crust, you just gotta put in a, just a little bit of liquid at a time so you don't overdo it. I think this is gonna do it just perfect. And you don't want it to be too sticky because this is kind of a, it's like a short crust pastry, really. 
So it's a little crumbly, rich, full of flavor. You are going to love it. Okay. Let's see if I can get this formed into a ball. Trying to get all of that to stick together so we don't lose any of that delicious flavor in there. Okay, there we go. So you have your ball, you move over here to your parchment paper. Okay, and you just press it down with your hands first into kind of, you know, just a circle. And because it is kind of dry, you kind of have to pinch it back together as you go because the outsides are going to start to split just like a regular pie crust does. And then I put my other piece on top and then you just keep rolling it out. Rolling it one direction and then the other direction so you can keep that circular shape going. And you can just slightly see it through the parchment paper. Just takes a little patience. Don't rush it because then you'll end up with just a whole bunch of cracks and it'll be really hard to get into your pie plate. We're getting there. I'm going to take it off. I'm going to squeeze the cracks back together so we can keep going. Okay. At this point, I think I'm just going to use my without the parchment paper because then I can see it better. And it's a dry enough mixture where it shouldn't stick to your rolling pin too bad. But if it starts sticking, put that parchment paper back on there and keep rolling. Okay. So this doesn't need to be like a pie crust. You make it much bigger than the pie crust and you, you shave off the top, but we're not gonna take the crust all the way to the top. We're only going about two thirds to three quarters of the way up. And the edges don't need to be perfect on this because you're gonna still press more when you get it in there. So now, the nerve wracking part, getting it from the parchment into the pan, probably easier to flip it but I think it's it's just a little too dry there we go get these out of the way so now you can do it the rest just with your hands so you just take the extra little pieces press it into the spots that are broke a little bit cracked and then, see how it comes up on the edges a little bit? We're gonna take that. You need to have a little bit extra coming up so that you can press the tops down into kind of a pretty scalloped edge for the crust. Okay, so that's, so I just kind of, I push with one hand and I push down with my thumb to make the little scalloped edge on the top. And this, you know, you can take as much time as you want. If you want it to be really pretty, take more time. But mine, like I always say, mine are always a little bit rustic. Because <sighs> I'm not that patient of a cook. Okay. See, that side's a little higher. Need a little of that over here. Okay, now that you have your crust in there, we're gonna stick it into the oven and we're gonna pre-bake it for about 10 minutes. You just wanna watch it and if it starts to get too brown on the edge, take it out. We're just trying to seal the surface of it a little bit 
so that when we have our quiche mixture, it doesn't just soak into that and they don't meld together. We want that to be two separate things. All right, so into the oven we go. Okay, so while our crust is baking, we're gonna start sauteing some of this stuff and pre-cooking the potatoes and leeks. So I've got a small onion here. Just gonna get in the pan. And then I have four leeks here that I've already cut up and one tip on the leeks. Rinse and rinse again and rinse again because they're grown in sandy soil and all of those little, you know, the, the little layers the sand gets caught in there and you think you got it clean enough and then when you go to eat your meal you get that gritty, you can just feel there's still sand in there. So rinse, rinse, rinse. So this is four leeks and two russet potatoes that I've got chunked up about like this, just bite size really. So we're just going to get these cooking and we're going to put uh, one cup of low sodium vegetable broth in here. And we'll put the lid on. And we're gonna cook this, this is on medium high for about 10 minutes or until the potatoes are just starting to feel slightly soft. Not completely soft, just slightly soft. So about that time. And then I'll show you the mixture that's gonna pull all of that together, all that creamy goodness. So we're just gonna wait for these to get done cooking and get our crust out of the oven. While we're waiting for that, I'd like to share with you some background on our show. The Whole Food Plant-Based Cooking Show is crowdfunded, which means these free weekly recipe videos, along with our entire catalog of recipes on our website, plantbasedcookingshow.com, and our new Plant-Based Cooking Made Easy Cookbook are all made possible in part by the generous patronage of our supporting members. By becoming a supporting member, you gain access to great member perks like monthly product giveaways, free downloads of our eBooks, and access to our in-depth courses, including our 28 Days Plant-Based Made Easy course, where we offer a step-by-step -step guide to making the switch to a fully plant-based diet. We create this show for the hundreds of thousands of viewers just like you who tune in each month from all over the world to make it easy for everyone to live a plant-based lifestyle. So if you love our content, please join us on our mission and become a supporting member today by following the link in the description. Okay, let's get back to the show. Okay, so now our vegetables are cooked, or almost cooked through our potatoes and leeks. So we're just gonna set those aside. And our crust is here out of the oven. Now we're gonna make the creamy mixture that's gonna glue all of that together. So what I have here is an extra firm tofu. So this is seven ounces or half of a box. We're just gonna stick that into our Nutribullet here. One teaspoon of miso. This is white miso paste. A quarter of a cup of nutritional yeast. Half teaspoon of turmeric. A tablespoon of lemon juice quarter of a cup of vegetable broth and a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. That's going to give it that nice punchy bite flavor. So good. Okay. Now we're going to blend this all together until it's really smooth and creamy. There you go, and one tip for these Nutribullets, if you have the taller container in there, sometimes it gets air pockets in there and it won't blend very well, but if you slightly turn it to the side and you can even shake it a bit, it doesn't hurt the motor at all, but it keeps things moving in there without having to keep opening the uh, top and pressing it down again. All right, so we're gonna take this mixture out. And we're going to put it into the bowl with the potatoes and leeks. Get our blender out of the way. Okay, 
get all that creamy goodness out of there. I can already smell it. The leeks and the potatoes just smell amazing. And then you have this mustardy mixture here. The smell is just amazing. I love it. Okay. That's about good. All right. Now I'm going to put a little bit of fresh cracked pepper in there. I don't like to blend it in there because it just doesn't look very good and it kind of just breaks it up too small. I like to have those little chunks in there. Now we're just going to stir it up. You want to make sure it's mixed in pretty well just so you can get, you know, it's really evenly distributed. There you go. Look at that. Oh, oh the smell. I love it. Okay, and this guy's still pretty hot. Ooh. Move that over. Now you're just going to pour it into your pie pan or pie plate. And then you're going to smooth it around a bit. And it is going to come right up actually a little bit taller than your crust, which is okay. It won't boil over because there's not that much liquid in it. So you just kind of press it out to the edges. Yum, 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 yum. Okay, so our oven is still on 375. And I'm going to put it in there. I'm going to start out at 35 minutes. And then I'll, I'll kind of touch the top. And you can kind of tell if it's done, if it's nice and firm. And it's getting just slightly a darker color. So into the oven we go. All right, guys, it is out of the oven and smelling amazing. If you want to come in and take a look, man, I cannot wait to dig into this. So let's take it to the table for a taste. Here we go. Still a little bit hot there. Okay. Wow, it's making my mouth water. I'm smelling it. Oh, I love this. It is a little bit tricky to get it out because the crust is nice and, you know, it's crumbly and kind of light. Oh, look at that. Look at that. So creamy. Oh my gosh. Mm. Okay. Here we go. Oh, a little hot. Mmm. That is delicious. The crust is really nice and crumbly, kind of rich. Mmm. And then you get a taste of the potato and the leek together with a creamy mustardy sauce. Mmm. Mmm. You are going to love this. So be sure to give this video a like and I'll see you next week for another great recipe.